Welcome to the Wish I'd Known Then podcast, where we focus on how authors found success, looking at strategies that have taken them to the top of the bestseller charts, as well as what they've learned from their mistakes. Because being an indie author is more than knowing the latest marketing trend. It's about being innovative and creative and learning from your mistakes. Welcome to the Wish I'd Known Then podcast. I'm Sarah Rosette. And I'm Jamie Albright. And this week on the show, we have Rachel Hanna. Yes, we do. And (laughs) y'all, I know I've said this before, but you better buckle up because it (laughs) is amazing. This woman is. Yes. Crazy. She's doing really well with direct sales. That was why we were like, come talk to us about direct sales. But we we talk about a lot of other things in the interview, but I think that's the thing that most people will be most interested in. And there's like a whole story behind the recording of the interview. We had issues and she was kind enough to come back. Yeah. And we're going to blame it on Zoom. uh, Yes. It was not our fault, I'm sure. Of course. (laughs) She was kind enough to come back just in a few days. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, so we really appreciate it, Rachel. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. She's a listener of the show and she's in the Facebook group, but, um, y'all it's great. It, yeah. There are a couple of times yeah. in my mind, just, if you could have seen, it was the emoji of my <laughs> head exploding. So, um, yeah, it was great. Yeah. So, we both got some really good tips and ideas. So mm-hmm. it's, yeah. it's, it's coming. So that's coming up. Um, we don't have any new supporters this week because we're recording a little bit early because uh, I'm going to be out of town. Yep. We're at Inkers Con right now, uh, recording mm-hmm. in our separate hotel rooms. Um, mm-hmm. I think we could have done it in the same hotel room, but we were afraid mm-hmm. we something up. So we didn't. And yeah. Uh, so, yeah, no new supporters. I don't really have any news because we just recorded an intro not too long ago. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so we're at Inkers and we're recording early, so we don't have uh, new subscribers, but I think this is a good match for this podcast because the talk of the conference is direct sales. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. this is working out well. Um, but even though we don't have new supporters, we're appreciative for all the supporters who have continued to support us. And we're just so thankful that you're here riding along with us on this writing journey. Mm -hmm. And um, we also have an industry sponsor this time and that is Vellum. And we love Vellum. Um, You can do a lot with Vellum. Mm -hmm. You can do your interiors. You can do some special things with your interiors. You can do customized links to the back of your books and you can also do large print and they make it really easy. Right. Right. And you really have been taking advantage of the large print for a while. Uh, because mm-hmm. your audience is old, yeah. And because libraries have really mm-hmm. loved your mm-hmm. large print books, and I, yeah, and I've recently, it, it makes it really easy to do it. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yes, I've used it for my large print books as well um, that I have going out to libraries, and um, it's super easy. The only thing you need is a different. You just need to contact your cover designer and tell them it's, you know, you have to get a different cover because your book's going to be longer because you have the large print, but um, it was simple. It was literally Mm -hmm. click a button and it was so easy. So there's, and then you're done. Yeah. And then you're done. And that's just another stream of income, you know, I mean, because Mm -hmm. large print serves a different audience and it's not just at, Mm-hmm. folks who are you know older in age and can't see real well you know because of age you know people who with a uh, visual impairment can it makes mm-hmm. accessible to them and I think that's fantastic and um that's mm-hmm. what I love about vellum they they really kind of anticipate not only the author's needs but the the reader's needs too and I think that's great mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I've been really happy with like, it's really easy to do the large print and just having that extra edition Mm -hmm. makes your books look a little bit more professional. Right. We're really happy. I'm so thankful we have Vellum. So Mm -hmm. um, if you want to try it out, you can um, go in, you can upload your book, you can work with it and see what, what you can do. 
but you only pay when you're ready to like export your book. And right. so you can try everything out and see how you like it. So if you want to give it a try, you can go to trivellum.com slash wish. Yep. And it's only for Mac though. Did we mention that? We have in the past, but yeah. not this time, yeah. Yeah. It yeah. is only so, for Mac. So, so that's, it, that is one, I guess, thing about it. But I, I feel like, you know what? For me, it was almost worth getting a Mac just so I could use Vellum. <laughs> That's true. I could see that. Yeah. And I know people who have bought Macs, like they go find a used Mac so that they can use Vellum. So, yeah. 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 Well, I think that uh, we have beat that horse. And um, so now <laughs> it is time to get on with the uh, interview with Rachel, Hannah, and y'all just get ready. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. Just get ready. Yeah. Yeah, tell us, let us know what you're doing with direct sales after you listen to this, because we're curious how, yep. what she inspi- inspires you to do. So yep. here is Rachel. Well, today we have Rachel Hanna with us. Hi, Rachel. How are you? I'm good. How are you? We, we are, are great. Great. Yeah. yeah. We're so glad to, to talk to you. We've had a little trouble with our recording, but hopefully this one will work great. Yes. <laughs> so we're going to jump in with your bio. Uh, Rachel is a Southern women's fiction author who writes about strong women starting over. Her books are full of small town, clean romance, and are set at the beach or in the mountains. That is awesome. Yep. And so tell us how you got into writing. Well, I mean, initially I was in third grade. I don't know that we necessarily need to go back that far. (laughs) (laughs) But that is where it started. I used to, I used to write little stories and my, my third grade teacher, Mrs. Ham. Uh, who was my favorite teacher, she leaned down as she hand back, handed back one of my papers and she said, you're going to be a great author one day where the other kids couldn't hear because I guess they weren't going to be great authors. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so I took a long journey to get there, but I went to journalism school. I was in broadcast journalism. So I worked at CNN and Georgia Public Television and I worked at newspapers and radio stations. And then I met my husband and ended up in real estate for 15 years because Mm -hmm. it makes total sense. Um, So (laughs) in 2012, I heard about this thing called Kindle and I was working from home as a ghostwriter anyway. And I was doing internet marketing and affiliate marketing and all this different stuff. And I heard about this Kindle and people were making money just writing stuff and putting it on this Kindle thing. And I was like, well, I'll try that. So I started out with some nonfiction probably in 2011 writing just the goofiest little books and then <laughs> um, heard people do, doing fiction. And I was like, oh, I haven't written fiction in a long time. So I think I can try that, you know? So I just, I just sort of jumped into it. I didn't have any, well, none of us did. None of us had any real plan or sense no. of what we were doing back then. It was truly, it was truly the golden age of Kindle where yes. <laughs> you could just write a book and put it up there and it would just be up at the top because there was not that much competition. It was really right. A special time. Uh, <laughs> it was the, the Wild West, though. Um, so, yeah, so I started doing that in uh, late, like late uh, fall of 2012. Okay. Was when I got my first book. So my first books are not still published because they are not my best work. Um, yeah. But that's when I first started. And, and I was doing really well. After about three months, I was I was already making like $5,000 a month. And I said, hmm, this looks interesting. Um, this has so, potential, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, this this seems nice, but then I then I me- then I messed myself up, and we'll probably talk about that in a few minutes about what yeah. I did. <laughs> one of my biggest mistakes. So. <laughs> okay, well, that is awesome, and it's so you didn't start out in romance then. You started out in another genre and moved to romance later. Well, I no, I started out in nonfiction for a little bit, where I was just okay. doing, like I was doing the craziest like little recipe books and stuff. That's mm-hmm. what everybody was doing. We were writing a bunch of little nonfiction books. But mm-hmm. when I started out, I actually started out in contemporary romance, which mm-hmm. looking back, that was one big mistake I made. I mean, I, I it was just such a giant yeah. category. And back mm-hmm. then, none of us really talked about subgenres and sub subgenres. And so we I, nobody said those words. And so mm-hmm. I just said, oh, romance. OK, I'll write a romance. But there was mm-hmm. nothing special about them at the time, like mm-hmm. that made them like sports romance or small town romance. Yeah, there was nothing like that. It was just a giant, you mm-hmm. know romance kind of stuff so that um made it a much harder you know entry because everybody was writing romance when they started on Kindle. Wow. And, yeah so, and still it's it's a hard category to break into 
generally if you're not going to niche down some. Yeah. So yeah, that's where I started. Yeah. Well, what is your definition of success? Um, freedom, <laughs> whether it's financial freedom or time freedom, um, you know, obviously the, the money is a good thing, yeah. but what it really buys you is just the freedom to make w- whatever choices you want to make, you know, mm-hmm. so you're not, I mean, there's been many years of my life before my author business took off after doing it for eight, eight years, um, where, you know, money was always tight. And mm-hmm. all, you know, I remember what that felt like to have to check my bank balance, like all day long, mm-hmm. every day, like, mm-hmm. oh, no, yeah, <laughs> you know, or there's a car repair or whatever. So having that freedom to not have to sit around and worry about that all the time and be able to, you know, enjoy life a little more. I, that That is my definition of success. Oh, that's great. That's great. Because you're about to travel, aren't you? This week? Well, we, we have a um, a home in the Blue Ridge Mountains. Mm-hmm. So we live between two houses. Ah. All the, so I have to I have to get back up there for a few days and back down here for a few days. <laughs> so, it's a lot. so that's that's the traveling. We also have a motor home, but we have not gone anywhere yet <laughs> because we bought a mountain house. And now yeah. I'm like, well, where am I going in this motor home? So that's right. <laughs> it's a good problem to have, though. It yeah. is. It <laughs> too, is. Many choices, too many choices. <laughs> Yeah. So what do you wish you'd known about writing in craft? Um, I wish I had known that it was okay to do it my own way. Right. Um, and I tell people that now because like, even, even, even occasionally now, not so much as it used to be, I will try to figure out how to outline mm-hmm. or plot and <laughs> I'm not that person. Yeah. But, and my readers love my books the way that they are. But if I try to outline they're much more flat because I know what's going to happen mm. as, as opposed to me writing, which I'm, I'm typically typing along and then I'll go, Oh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Who's that? Well, I didn't know she was going to do that. Like I'm yeah. constantly doing that. Yeah. If, if I don't write that way, they're just not as good. Mm-hmm. And, but that was one of the, what I was mentioning earlier was I had after three months, I was making about 5,000 a month. And then I just psyched myself out because all the authors that I had met so far around me were plotting And it made me feel like I wasn't a real author. So I took seven months off trying to learn how to plot. (laughs) And I didn't write any books. And so I lost all my momentum. And I I never really got it back for for several years. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, that's the thing I think people have to understand. You have to figure out, like, what is what makes you write the best and it might not be what you want it to be. Like, I would love <laughs> to be that person that gets up in the morning and it's like, I write from, you know, eight to one and mm-hmm. then I do this and then I do. No, I am, mm-hmm. I am a pantser in all parts of my life. I never know what <laughs> I'm doing that day. I don't know where I'm going. I'm, I just, I just, everything's by the seat of my pants and I hate it sometimes mm-hmm. how it works, you know? So I yeah. think it's not fighting against the, just the way that you write is, is, so helpful to just don't do that. Don't waste time doing that. I mean, it's fine to read craft books and get better at that, Mm -hmm. but try to make yourself do it like somebody else does it. Right. Right. So, so important. Mm -hmm. And there is like this, it does sound great to be able to plan out your book and to have a schedule where you're going to write so many words a day. And at the end of this period of time, you'll have a draft, but it doesn't always work like that. Do you uh, like, work in burst and take breaks or do you? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's weird because um, I do that. I do what I call author math, you know, where I sit down and I'm like, I've got author so math. Many, yeah. <laughs> I need 60,000 words. And if I do this many, of it, like it never works. It never works out ever. <laughs> Jamie and I are both just laughing because we, laughing we feel cause that I've so much. That. Yeah, I've done that. <laughs> I do it every time. Oh, and it, so I write in Scrivener and I always put in like project target. So I will put in like the date mm-hmm. I'd like to finish and how much I'd like for it. <laughs> but it's funny. I, I just did this yesterday on my current work in progress. I had it at a certain word count that I wanted to hit. And then I just knocked it down by about 5,000 words. It was <laughs> <no> better. <laughs> I'm not going to hit that. I can already tell. Oh, my and, uh, gosh. Yes, I do write in bursts. I sprint with, you know, a lot of my writer friends, um, and that helps me. I, I do that on Clubhouse. Yeah. And um, and, and you, usually we keep each other on track. It just depends on who's in the room, honestly, yeah. Yeah. Uh, because yeah. I can be a distraction. And so I'll say I'm going to write, and then they come back, and everybody's like, what did you do? And I'm like, I watched Designing Women or Judge Judy or <laughs> 
I wandered into the kitchen and ate a jar of olives. Like, I mean, I'm just all over the place. So I do, I am one of those people who has to feel like the inspiration and sometimes yes. it does not come. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That can be a big problem. So then I get myself to the, to the finish line and I'm like, oh crap, I need to write 15,000 words by like two days from now. Yeah. Then I, then I'm under, and I did that even in school and college. I was always a procurator. And did my best work under pressure, but that gets a lot harder as you get older. And I <laughs> like it now, but I still keep doing it. So mm -hmm. yeah, I do write in a lot of bursts. I do a lot of, um, I type when I first start a story, especially if it's a new like cast of characters. But as soon as I know the people, I start dictating as much as I can. And wow. so it's more editing, but it gets, it just yeah. gets better words, better dialogue and stuff like that. So I have kind yeah. of a disjointed process. <laughs> Well, but that's the thing. If it's working and you're producing books and your readers love them, then that's the most important thing, right? So yeah, I think that's yeah. great. Yeah. And it clearly works for you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, what about marketing? What do you wish you'd known about marketing? Um, I mean, I, I, I run ads all over the place. You know, I think, I think one of the things I, you know, when I first started, there was no mark, there was no paid marketing, really. There were no, <laughs> I know it's hard for the newer authors to realize we didn't have Facebook ads and we didn't have Amazon ads. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, we just sort of wrote it and hoped Amazon liked, liked it enough to show it to somebody. Mm -hmm. um, so, but, you know, I think if I were starting now, I would immediately start advertising. I think you're going to have almost an impossible time mm -hmm. uh, really getting anywhere without doing some paid marketing. Right. Uh, and so, and I think, you know, never stop learning it. You know, I, I still, honestly, the marketing is my favorite part. I know as an author, you're supposed to say the writing is your favorite part, <laughs> but me and the writing don't get along a lot. You know, mm -hmm. we kind of have a dysfunctional marriage. And so um, I love the marketing. Like I can just play in Canva all day, you know, mm -hmm. and just make graphics and adjust ads. And then I'm like, yep. oh, I'm supposed to have a book done. And so, you know, it, it, I love that part of it. I love mm -hmm. socializing with my readers and chatting in my reader group, all that kind of stuff. So um, I think, you know, one thing I wish I had done initially, and I honestly didn't do this for a couple of years, was set up a mailing list. I didn't do that. When I first started, mm -hmm. nobody talked about it. Mm -hmm. I was mm -hmm. with a company called AWeber for my emails back then, which I don't know <laughs> anybody uses anymore much from our, from our like um, profession. But um, I wish I had done that sooner. You know, I... Yeah. I wish I had really taken that more seriously at the time. Um, but I think I've always been pretty, you know, once I had marketing avenues available to me, I've always taken advantage of those. Mm. So, yeah, but I think if you're starting out, you got to stay, stay consistent with it. Um, mm -hmm. Open your Facebook reader group the moment that you start publishing, like really start trying to build it. It's going to, a lot of people get dejected because they're like, oh, I have zero people or mm -hmm. whatever. Like, all had zero people exactly started you know i did not <laughs> come into this with a silver author spoon in my mouth i like had to start at zero like everybody else so right you, you mm -hmm. have to start it to get you know to where you're where you're going so right and mm -hmm. how many people do you have now on my mailing list uh but my in mailing list and and your facebook group my facebook group has i think just under fifteen thousand people awesome in it. Um, awesome and my mailer light, which was my my original big mailing list, has somewhere around forty thousand. And then I've mm -hmm. just built a new mailing list with my direct store, which has about twenty five thousand people. Fantastic! Yes. That's so, fantastic. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. And there's something to be said for longevity. That like, mm -hmm. if you go it like you said, go ahead and start your group and your mailing list. And even because we've had people in our Facebook group ask, you know, it seems like it's not worth it because it's so slow. Mm -hmm. But if it's there, it will build over time. Yeah. 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 And you just have to, you have to tell people about it. You have to yes. put it in mm -hmm. back matter. You mm -hmm. have to put it in, you know, anywhere that you can. In your newsletter. Yeah. Put it in your newsletters. In, in every newsletter that goes out in my mailer light, I have the, I have a template that I created. It's ugly as homemade sin, but it, you know, it does the job. <laughs> and that's, sorry, that was a Southern phrase. I'm sorry. I forget it. Uh, that's okay. We <laughs> love I it. I feel it. I feel it. <laughs> Yeah, I know you, I know you can feel it. I know you can feel that one. Um, but at the bottom of that one, there's a, there's a yellow box that's like, join my reader group. And it just is in every email. It's just there. Yeah. So I can, sometimes I call it out and say, Hey, make sure to check out the yellow box, you know, or whatever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and I also do things in that reader group that that's the only place I do it. So 
uh, for that's where I get all of my advanced readers for each book because I change teams with every book. So mm-hmm. people can't get on my reader team if they don't join my group. And I'm and I make sure to tell them that so that more people join, you know, as often as possible. I'll do certain giveaways in there that I don't do anywhere else, or I'll do cover reveals in there and not do it anywhere else. So it, it right. gets people to come in there and have a reason to to be there. Right. Right. Mm. Well, I love that. And you know, I did start a newsletter before. I put out the first book, but I did not start a reader group for, it was about a year, maybe a year and a half until after. And I missed a lot of people that way. You know, I I wish I had done it sooner because what's that quote? uh, Start like you want to finish. (laughs) Yeah. And so you should, I mean, I think a lot of us think, well, you know, I'm not really big enough to do this or I'm not big enough to do that. Well, plan to be that way. You know, right. at some yeah. point you are going to be that way. So start mm-hmm. it now and let it build. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, yeah. I think you have to kind of behave your way to success with that. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. like I said, I was, I was in this for eight years and I did, I was doing okay, mm-hmm. but I was not getting very far. Like my yeah. highest month was like $11,000, which would be a lot to some people, but in eight years, that was not a lot for me. Mm-hmm. And when I wrote the beach house in late 2019 and it just, took off like mm-hmm. a rocket and dra- dragged everything along with it that I'd written and everything since, you know, I did that. I was very specific about how I did that. Like I, at the time was running an eBay business to try to make ends meet. I'd been doing mm-hmm. that off and on for 20 years. I just got very frustrated one day and I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. Mm-hmm. So I told my husband and my son, I was like, take everything out of this eBay room, which was like a, could have been on an episode of hoarders. I mean, it was awful. <laughs> and I said, throw it in the basement. I don't want to see it. I don't want to deal with it. I am an author at full time, nothing else as of right now today. Mm-hmm. And so I redid the whole office and everything and it, that I looked at was something to do with author or money or mm-hmm. success or whatever. I just surrounded myself and I stayed in that room writing and I turned on certain music. I mean, I really just focused on it and it was so crazy how fast that took off for me. Mm-hmm. But I finally just committed to this is all that I'm doing and I'm going to act like a successful author every day. You know, I'm I'm going to do the things that I think a successful author would do. And I think you really have to do that. I think you have to mm. just act your way there because at the beginning you aren't a successful no, author. No, <laughs> you're not. Yeah, but you gotta pay your dues. We all we all have. So we you know, some of have, pay them yeah. longer. <laughs> so. Yeah, in yeah. in weird orders, you know. Yeah. 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 So it's it's very interesting. Well, what assumptions did you make at the beginning of your writing career, and looking back, did they turn out to be right or wrong? Um. Oh gosh, that was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I, I think I probably assumed that it was easier than it turned out to be because. Yeah. Like, I really, I mean, this is a thing that you're not supposed to admit out loud, uh, but I, I wasn't much of a read. I like to read, but I like to read nonfiction. I like to read mm. business and mm-hmm. health and mindset and stuff. I didn't like to read fiction. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so my <laughs> idea was, well, I'm going to write this fiction stuff. So I'm going to take a weekend and I'm going to read like two or three books and then mm-hmm. I'll be ready to go. And that's but, what I did. I literally just picked like a couple of books uh, from well-known authors, you know, in the in the uh, romance category. Mm-hmm. I sat around reading and I was like, I think I could do this. You know, I just thought <laughs> I was like, whatever, you know. And that's kind of how I start. So I think I was very naive. Yeah. <laughs> and really now looking back, knowing what really goes into the business and the and just the craft of it and the mm-hmm. editing. I mean, gosh, those first books, I didn't get them edited at all. I was the right. only one who did them. <laughs> And you don't see your own errors. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, but, me, yeah. but yeah, so I yeah. think I just, I, you know, you go into it and you don't. I think it is one of the things that slips people up. They come in wanting to be a writer, mm-hmm. a writer, and then they come in and they're like, "Oh, I have to do these five hundred other things, mm-hmm. or else my books just go into oblivion." You know, mm-hmm. so I think I was probably pretty naive about that, and, yeah. and you know would tell people if you're going to do this, figure out if you're doing it for love, that's fine. But if you're doing it for money, uh, you're going to have to learn this other stuff and, and be good with doing it too. Right. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I mean, you cannot love it, um, but you got to learn to do it. If you're doing it for right. money, if you're doing it for longevity, if you're doing it, you know, um, yeah. you, but you have to learn it. Yeah. And I think that's, that's what holds a lot of people up, you know? So, yeah. I you can learn it as you go. Like you right. don't have to know it ahead of time. You can learn on the job, 
but you do have to kind of commit to that part of it too. I think you also have to be okay with failure. You know, oh, I'm yeah. one of those people who's like, let me fail faster. Mm-hmm. Let me see how bad I can <laughs> fail, you know, like it doesn't scare me or bother me or anything. I'm just like, okay, well that didn't work, you know? And then I just get up and go on. I'm, I'm not, I'm somebody, I don't take risks in life. Like I'm right. not going to ever get on a roller coaster or jump out of a perfectly good airplane. <laughs> but I will throw so much money at Facebook ads with absolutely yeah. no idea if they're going to work. <laughs> like it doesn't <laughs> bother me at all. So I think you have to, you can't really in this business be risk averse. You, you, yes. If you want to be successful, you're yeah. going to have to do some off the wall, outside of the box kind of things that you might be like, oh, I'm scared to death to do. But you have to do those things to if you want to get to certain levels, you know. Yeah. So that's a that's something too. Well, that is a good lead into our next question is what's the most important thing you've learned? Um, I have learned that I am the only person who can write what I, the way I write. Mm. And I and I am not in competition with other authors. Right. And I have learned that my readers really, really wanted me to be a real person and be a friend, like be like a friend to them. And so Mm -hmm. that, that alone has helped me develop so many super fans because the first eight years, I mean, my, this is my pen name. So the first eight years I hid my face, I didn't do video. I didn't do anything, which I think really hurt me because mm-hmm. they couldn't connect with me. Right. And I used the pen name because I, <laughs> I didn't want my family to know what I was writing. I write clean now, but at the beginning I had some steamy stuff and I, my, my mama would have not liked that at Slapped all. Slapped you silly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Southern Baptist mamas are not. <laughs> uh, and I wasn't good at it. I thought, dear Lord, I would sit there and just hate writing that stuff. And so I didn't do it for long, but you know, I, I'm sorry, my Siri is talking to me on my watch. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I just hid behind it and it, mm-hmm. and it, and it inhibited me too, because like, I felt like I couldn't really connect with people. Yeah. And, and so I came out of the shadows um, <laughs> after the beach house because I had people contacting me that knew me and they're like, somebody is using your photo. <laughs> on their author page, on this, this paperback I bought or I got from the library, and like people I hadn't talked to in years, were like, they're stealing your photo and pretending it's. I was like, no, that, that. <laughs> that's actually <laughs> me. <laughs> yeah, so I had to come out and be like, everybody, this is me, you know, yeah. um, because it, there was no way of hiding it. So, mm-hmm. but it has made things so much easier and so much better, and and has allowed my business to just grow like crazy, right? Because you know, we all have our own personality. We all have our own gifts, you know, Mm -hmm. and mine is humor and talking. I can do that all day long, you know, so Mm -hmm. it helps me interact and connect with my readers a lot better. Um, and so I think that really has, has made a big difference. And if I had it to do over again, I wouldn't have, I would have had a pen name just to have a pen name, but I wouldn't Mm -hmm. have, I wouldn't have hidden myself. Yeah. yeah, that's great. So you still, you still have the pin name, right? But it's just not a secret pin name, right? Is that right. how it works? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's just not, it's just not secret, but <laughs> it is funny because some of my books, I would write real things in from my life. And then my mom doesn't normally read, but oh, now she needs to read. So <laughs> she's reading stuff, but she'll probably listen to this too. She's reading stuff and she'll go, I know that's me. I know that when that, when that that's me and it's always the bad characters is the uh, annoying mother or, or she'll go, I remember when this happened, that yeah. is not exactly how that happened. I'm like, I'm writing fiction. Okay. That's right. That's right. That's <laughs> my family everybody. says the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. So you funny. take a little bit of real life and then you kind of <laughs> yeah work it a little bit. Like you need it like dough. So, yeah. <laughs> well, I wrote some of my books, not thinking anybody I knew was ever going to read. Right. I know. And then I'm they, thinking anybody was going to read it. I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Exactly. Oh, gosh. Well, what's the biggest change you've made in, uh, in your thinking over the years? Um, when I, when I finally, you know, threw all my stuff in the basement that day, um, I, <laughs> I love that. My, my mindset. <laughs> I just, I just got, you know, I just had one of those come to Jesus meetings with myself, but, um, I, I, I have, during that time, I had a friend who was, uh, had released something and we had started together years ago. And I was like asking her, I'm like, how much are you making? You know, and she was yeah. telling me how much she was making per month. And I was like, no, that's not possible because I'd never <laughs> thought that. Cause I had these like mindset blocks. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, and so 
I once I realized that one person can do it, mm -hmm. then I realized that I could do it. Mm -hmm. And so that's just sort of the way I look at everything now is if, mm -hmm. you know, if somebody else is doing it, just like with the direct sales, if somebody else is doing it and they're making this much money, then that means that I can do it and make this much right. money. Right. And so I think you really have to like work on your mindset blocks. And there's lots of, I'm sure, YouTube videos and books and everything mm -hmm. about that. But you have to figure out what it is. Like one of my blocks um, for a long time was I don't want to make a lot of money because then I'll have to deal with taxes mm. and I don't want to deal with taxes. And a lot of people have that one. And so I had to work through that. You know, I had mm -hmm. to sit and write and journal and do things to try to work through that. Mm -hmm. And so I, I intentionally work through mindset blocks. If I feel anything coming up that feels negative to me about money or business or anything, I immediately stop what I'm doing and I go start working on that because they, they hold people back, not just for years, but some people for their entire lives, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. y'all probably know people who are in their late, you know, years of their life and they still have these blocks and they could have done things with their lives that they wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So I really make time to go through those things if I feel anything kind of bubbling up because, you know, selling on Amazon can mess with your mind. Yes, it can. <laughs> And like, I, let me tell you right now, all this category stuff, I have three books in my oh, best yes. 10 book series. One of them is in, um, it wasn't stacking chairs. I was number one. Um, one in stacking chairs, y'all. Number one. Congratulations. In yes. I was very excited. Um, but then they moved me to office sofas and, for, and, uh, and furniture or something like that. So now I'm like number 58 there. And then it, two other books are in address books and oh, um, lesson planners and yeah. so I'm trying to work through that so that could drive me crazy right that yeah could right over the edge. but it you just have to laugh at it that's the only thing I can mm -hmm. do is laugh at it because yeah. it's so ridiculous yeah um, mm -hmm. and and get in touch with my my you know rep over there and talk to the, them and be like hello um so but that having a, a store now takes that pressure off of mm -hmm. having to worry about everything right. about Amazon. but yeah so you have to I mean you're going to have mindset issues anytime you're working with Amazon or any big company mm -hmm. that has right. your money and future in, in their mm -hmm. hands. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we're going to talk about direct sales in a little bit. So we'll come back to that. But um, we always also like to ask, um, you've mentioned a little bit of this. If you were starting over today, what would you do differently? Like you talked about how you'd go ahead and run ads right away yeah. because, you know, there wasn't, you didn't have that when you started, but is there anything else yeah. that you when I, like I said, when I started, I started in romance and mm -hmm. I really, it took me a few years to realize that what I really wanted to write wasn't necessarily romance. It was women's fiction mm -hmm. I wanted to write more with the romance in it, but more about the woman and her journey, whether it's through friendships or family relationships or whatever. And it took me years to kind of even figure out what that was called because I wasn't yeah. a mm -hmm. reader. And so I didn't do it. And I looked um, in the in the top 100 several times throughout the years. And I'm like, there's no indie authors in here mm. writing fiction. They're all writing romance. That must mean somebody's tried it already and it didn't work. And so I didn't pursue it for years, for eight years, mm. when I could have started that way earlier and really had a foothold, you know, in that genre. Mm -hmm. if I, mm -hmm. so I wish I had done that. So, you know, I would say if something's nagging at you, that you want to take a chance on and you're like, I really want to write, you know, clean and wholesome dragon romance. Mm -hmm. And it's just stupid because nobody's doing it. <laughs> you know, like, if you're feeling that like kind of a thing, then try it. Even mm -hmm. if you have to get another pen name, like go mm -hmm. try it and see what happens. But right. um, I wish I had back then known it was, you know, it was okay for me to just take these big chances, you know, right. Um, but I was following the crowd. So I think when you follow the crowd, you're just going to end up, you know, the same way as the rest of the crowd. Yeah. One <laughs> in a million. Authors. I mean, you know, part of the millions instead right. of one in a million. Yeah. And mm -hmm. most authors, I mean, unfortunately, the stats are there that, you know, most authors don't make that much money. Mm -hmm. I think it's like what av the average is like 10,000 a year or something. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I don't follow the crowd anymore. And I do sometimes get advice from my author friends about, well, I would do this or I wouldn't do that. But in the end, it's still my business. Mm -hmm. and I have to just mm -hmm. do what feels right. And sometimes I just, go a totally different direction. And, and so far it's worked out for me, but, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think I would, I would take more chances in areas like that. Start my newsletter list. Yeah. Um, unhide my face. Yes. <laughs> Unleash my personality. <laughs> yeah. And let the chips yeah. fall where they may. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So now you're writing um, women's fiction and 
um, you touched on it a minute ago, but you talked about it's more about the women, uh, the woman's journey. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about that and the difference between that and romance, clean and or I hate the word clean. You know what I'm saying? Or steamy romance. Not uh, dirty. Yeah, I hate that. That's just, ooh. Anyway, uh, yeah. But can you just sort of tell our listeners the difference, you know, yeah. as you see it? Yeah, I mean, the way I look at it, women's fiction, first of all, is a very broad category. I mean, yeah. You can have women's paranormal fiction and all kinds of right, things. So right, right, right. Huge broad category. But to me, the focus is on the woman. Uh-huh. Um, and so like there's can be romance in it and that's Mm -hmm. how my books are there's there's romance kind of I guess subplots and they are important in the book and um I don't even know that my readers of of my newer stuff would look at it as one or the other I don't Mm -hmm. think they care Mm -mm. you know Mm -hmm. but the way I look at it is that it's it's following the woman's journey and her growth from who she is at the beginning of the book to who she is at the end of the book um whether that's through showing her starting a new career starting over after a divorce or or spouse dying, starting over um, in a new town, you know, and, and dealing with family relationships or friendships. So that's what I focus on. Mm-hmm. And then in there, I always have romance because I know my readers love romance mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. Um, and I like to write romance. Mm-hmm. So I, I think for me, what I've tried to really do in the last few years, because I do still have books that are just straight romance from earlier, but as of 2019, everything else has been women's fiction with romance in it. Mm-hmm. Um, because like my earlier books were straight romance. The whole plot was about the romance. Yes. There was no, there might've been a mom or a sister or something just hanging mm-hmm. out on the side, but the whole point was the romance. Mm-hmm. Um, but now what I really try to do is just give my readers uh, the Rachel Hannah experience with every book. So something that they can, they know this is how I'm going to feel. This is what the right. book's like you know this yeah. is how the tone's going to be and I can trust that it's not going to have like my I have a lot of older readers they don't want bad language they don't want mm-hmm. sex scenes they don't want that stuff so mm-hmm. I know what they want now and I just aim to give them that over and over again mm-hmm. um, and not veer from that and there's sometimes that like I'm I'm like I should write you know like a psychological thriller and I know I'm not I can't <laughs> do that I'm not smart enough okay I'm not I'm not smart enough to write stuff like that but I think you know oh that would be fun to try something totally different and I think once, you know, it, it would be kind of like Chick-fil-A tomorrow deciding, well, we're tired of selling chicken. We're going to sell hamburgers. Like mm-hmm. stay in your lane and you do what you do really well. And you give the same experience, you know, every Chick-fil-A you go to, it's basically going to be the same experience. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of what I do with, with my books, or I try to do is give them that same experience so they can trust that if mm-hmm. they pay for one of my books, they're going to get that same feeling and they're going to get the warm fuzzies or whatever it is that they get. And I, that's what I just aim to deliver to them each time. So whether it's a romance or a women's fiction, I, you know, I'm still able to kind of put that touch on it. And that's what I was saying earlier. Everybody's mm-hmm. going to do that their own way that nobody else can copy you. Even AI is not going to be able to copy that <laughs> part of it, you know? So like hone that, hone that, whatever it is, yeah. ask readers how they feel when they, I, I poll my readers all the time. How do you mm-hmm. feel when you read my book? You know, how do you feel when this, how do you feel when that? And I take those words and I use them in ads yeah. so that, you know, if they use feel good or heartwarming or what mm-hmm. I use words and ads, because I, that's who I'm trying to bring in people who want that experience. Mm-hmm. And then it just starts to snowball. Yeah. 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 Very good. Yeah. I think that's wonderful. So let's get back to direct sales. Cause I know our listeners will have a lot of questions about that and mm-hmm. we want to hear about your direct sales. So Jamie, tell about the post that you saw in the Facebook group. Yeah. So we all this up. Right. So I did a post about, you know, what's going on, what's working for y'all, what's not working for y'all. And Rachel, uh, she posted that her direct sales were all, you know, if they kept going, they would outpace her Amazon sales. And I was just flabbergasted. And uh, so I immediately messaged Sarah and said, we need to get Rachel on the (laughs) podcast. And then I reached, and then I reached out to Rachel. So Rachel, tell us about your direct sales. I I am just fascinated by the whole thing. You know, that, what was so funny about that is I think I asked you wh- why you invited me specifically <laughs> about direct sales. And you're like, you posted, you answer. I was like, I'm on Facebook too much. I don't even remember commenting. <laughs> I, I, and it was only like a few days. I, I need to get my head examined. Yeah. <laughs> um, so <laughs> So when the whole Amazon category debacle started last um, last fall, 
Mm-hmm. I, I noticed it before anybody I knew noticed it. I'm, I didn't know what it was, but mm-hmm. I started saying something's wrong. Something's mm-hmm. wrong at the end of August. Yes. And I was running, um, I was running the, these ads called AMG ads that you can run through Amazon directly, like with an account manager and those weren't working and they had been working for like two years. And I, and mm-hmm. I was, ch- I'm like yelling at them going, you need to change the keywords and you're, and, and everything on their end looked fine. And I'm like, right. okay, something is wrong. Mm-hmm. So I started telling my friends, I'm like, y'all check check your stuff. Is something wrong with yours? Cause it, and then finally about a week passed and then everybody started going, ah, <laughs> screaming all through mm-hmm. the, the community. And right after that, um, a friend of mine told me about, um, this direct sales course that wasn't widely known to, in the author community at, at that point, mm-hmm. it was kind of an expensive course. And so I was like, yeah, sign me up for that <laughs> because <laughs> I don't like this. I I, know, I had been out of KU for years because I didn't like being exclusive to anybody. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I went wide and that's been, been good, but I was like, I want to go even further. Mm-hmm. I, I want to be that if Amazon, you know, they're, they're known for shutting down accounts and things sometimes. And so I wanted it to be just me to be able to not worry about that anymore because, mm-hmm. um, it, you know, it is a worry. I know we all kind of have it in the back of our minds all the time. Hmm. And so I, I started going through this, this training and, um, I just uh, immediately was like, oh yeah, I, I, this is, this is something I think I can do now. That being said, it was very technical the way that this was this particular training I went through was set up and there was a lot of testing and all, all kinds of things. I won't go into all that, but mm-hmm. it was, I, I was banging my head on the table regularly. I mean, I, I, I was just losing my mind, but it, it took me a few months and I finally got my store up the way I wanted it and everything. So I've officially opened, I guess you would say in January. Mm-hmm. And I think I made $5.99 that month. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. <laughs> so I'm now retired, obviously. Yeah. And, uh, so I was like, I, but I, I I knew I could do it. The, the main thing I've learned is that you, training, especially if you have older readers, mm-hmm. training them on using book funnel, um, mm-hmm. that has been a challenge. It's still some days, it's still a little bit of a challenge and mm-hmm. I've worked around it. But, um, but the more of us that do this and have mm-hmm. direct stores, the mm-hmm. easier it's going to be for all of us because the readers will then understand how to use book funnel and right. how to go downloads and get them onto their Kindle, mm-hmm. or whatever mm-hmm. it is. Um, so I, I only sell eBooks and audio on my store right now because I haven't found a good paperback option for me yet that I'd want to do. I don't want to self-fulfill because uh, mm-hmm. again, I've been on eBay for years and I have yeah. PTSD about mailing things. Right. Um, <laughs> Let me stop you right there real quick. She yeah. may, she is probably going to outpace her Amazon sales just with eBooks and audiobooks. Just great. in the United States, right? You said, yeah, just oh yeah, in just in the U.S. Because <laughs> I'm just Holy cow. <laughs> yeah, that's just amazing. Continue, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so last month, so so I I'm I'm a six figure a month earner on Amazon, um, and last this past month, I I was almost at half of what I make on Amazon per month in my store as well. Mm. Um, and then, you know, yeah, add in all your audio and your libraries and your yeah, life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it, it, it adds up. Um, so yeah, it's been month over month. It just gets better and better and better. Um, and during that, I've been able to build a whole different separate e- mailing list. And that mailing list is people who are e-commerce buyers and they operate very differently than your mailer light people who clicked on a link in the back of your book or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's just a very different group of people. They're there to buy. Mm-hmm. They're there to buy from you. And Mm -hmm. so, um, yeah, it's, it's just been, I've got some merch that I sell through Printify. I don't make very much on that. I did it mainly just for my readers because they wanted shirts and mugs Mm -hmm. and things like that. Um, but yeah, eBooks and audiobooks all done through book funnel. Um, and book funnel has got a great, their app is great for audio. It Mm -hmm. operates just like audible Mm -hmm. and all they have to do is download the free app and then, you know, book funnel sends them the, the code and they put it in and there's their, audiobook. So mm-hmm. just training, you know, my readers on how those things operate and, you know, doing little videos to show them how to, how easy it is and that sort of yes. thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm very, 
very encouraged by it. It's it, it's it's addicting. It's kind of like gambling or something because like all day I hear cha-ching, cha-ching on the shop. <laughs> and I'm so distracted by it. You know, I'm like, ooh, you know, and then I have to go look where did they come from and did yeah. they buy an upsell? And like, I'm just all over the place. So yeah. um, it's been a distraction for sure. Uh, I should be writing <laughs> this book I have due, um, but it, it has been really good. I've, I've really enjoyed it and I'm, I'm glad that I did it when I did. And mm-hmm. Well, it's obviously been worthwhile to Mm -hmm. to take a little break to set that up. So I know people will be curious. So you said you're using Shopify, right? So tell us about like, like what I've learned about Shopify is you can set up your store however you want. So like, what's your philosophy? Like, do you have bundles? Do you have all your products duplicated? Like everything you'd have in a retailer? Do you also have it on your store? How do you have your store set up? Yeah. So I have all my individual products and then I also have bundles mm, and the okay. bundles are what I advertise because it's very hard to make a profit mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, with Facebook ads. If you're going to sell something for five ninety nine or nine ninety nine, you really need a bigger, bigger, more expensive bundle to mm-hmm. make that worthwhile mm-hmm. um, because just the cost of Facebook ads. So yeah, I right. have it set up with individual products. I have um, upsells. I have, um, different apps that, you know, bundle things together and give them a little discount or whatever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, And and I will say one of the biggest things that, that I do, I have my mailing list for, for my store is called Clavio. That's what Mm -hmm. a lot of Shopify people use. And Clavio has these things called flows or just automated flows, but they are very, very powerful. And my, if you look at my last 30 days, I, I always make about 30% of my income through those automated flows. So it's just constant churning people in and out of different flows that I've created or that I've gotten from Clavio. And it it's just selling in the background for me, you know, mm-hmm. every day. So um, that's a big, important part of it too. I think for success that a lot of people miss, they think, oh, I'll just make a welcome flow. I probably have 20 flows going. Mm-hmm. All you know, they're pulling them in and out because what will happen is like if somebody purchases, they go into the purchaser flow and they're going to get two or three emails over the course of, you know, a week or two. Mm-hmm. But then let's say they, they don't buy anything for a certain period of time. Well, now they're going to go into a different flow. That's to try to re-engage them and give them a coupon. And then they go through that flow. Nope. They're back on the purchaser's flow again. So it's just, they go in and out of all of these flows all the time. And it just happens in the background and it's super powerful. And so so you can set those up on your own, but with Clavio, there are, a lot of them are pre-made for you, right? Yeah, they've got a ton of pre-made ones, and then you just go in and edit them, you know, for with your header and your information. Mm-hmm. And then I have a few that are just my own flows that I've created based on what they purchased, because Clavio has got all these filters, and you can make all these segments where it's like they purchased the beach house, but they haven't purchased uh, Sweet Tea B&B. Therefore, mm-hmm. I'm going to make this flow where they're going to learn all about Sweet Tea B&B. Mm-hmm. Um, so mm-hmm. it's stuff like that, that, that you can create specific to your own products. Um, you know, they purchased, uh, more than 60 days ago, but they haven't purchased anything since. I think I'll mm-hmm. send these people a coupon. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can have that just set up and they're dynamic. So it's mm-hmm. constantly being updated. Um, that's or you crazy. Don't do anything yeah. else with it. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. amazing. Very, very and, yeah. and I think I heard you say on, um, Clubhouse that, pardon me, <clears throat> that um, you, your ads are not only running people, I mean, they, they're designed to run people to your store, but, but people are actually going to Amazon and buying too. Like you're yeah. seeing uptake in your Amazon sales because of yeah, it. Yeah, quite a big percentage um, up from, uh, if what's funny is the series that I bundle is an old series. I wrote it in like 2015, 2016. It's what I would consider kind of a dead series Mm -hmm. which is why I was okay bundling it for for a a, a good price to get people in to me it's kind of like a loss leader and I didn't think it was going to do anything um now that series is selling like crazy on Amazon including the the first book which on one of my landing pages people get free every day but they instead of putting in their email to get it free they go to Amazon and they buy it for five dollars or actually six dollars so that book makes me like 125 a day by itself when they can get it on my landing page. Right. Right. Um, but the ads with Facebook, the most important thing to remember is like, we're all trained to use traffic ads. Mm -hmm. What I learned when I started doing the store traffic ads are, are what Facebook has declared that those people are people who are likely to click, but Mm -hmm. they are not likely to buy. 
Uh, and that's yeah. the problem. That's how we waste so much money as authors sending traffic to Amazon because mm -hmm. you're just sending clickers, people who are just curious about your ad. They click, they go over. They're probably not going to be likely to buy. Right. Um, when you do a store, though, you install a pixel on your site and you will use Facebook purchase conversion ads. Well, those are the people that Facebook has deemed as buyers. They know those people buy stuff. So you get the best quality traffic, like the best quality uh, audience, I guess I would say on Facebook when you do those kind of ads and you can't do those and send them to Amazon because Amazon doesn't talk back to the pixel. Right. So that is right. one of the biggest perks of the store is that my ads are going to purchasers, people who mm -hmm. are known to buy over and over from Facebook. And yeah, maybe they look at it and they don't buy from my mm -hmm. site and they mm -hmm. don't get the good deal because that's the only place they can get it. They'll right. go, you know, like my, my January Cove series that I, that I use has 10 books and two novellas for $25.99. People buy that all day long on my store, but some people won't or they didn't like mm -hmm. books, whatever. Yeah. They'll go buy them all individually for $6 a piece on yeah. Amazon, you know, wow. so that's how you end up getting more sales on Amazon too, with just the one kind of ad. I don't run any traffic ads to mm -hmm. Amazon anymore. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. wow. Well, this is I, it is fascinating, and I'm so happy for you that it's working so well. But I'm thinking about people who are listening who are like they haven't started a store or they've just started a store, and it it all sounds kind of overwhelming because it's like you got to set up the store and the flows and the ads. So what would you recommend for somebody who's fairly new but wants to start doing this? Yeah, I mean, it's hard when you don't really the main thing you need, I think, is something that you can bundle up that's a good enough price. So it may not be the best thing for somebody who's brand new to be doing unless you just don't want to run ads to it and you just want to, you know, just have it there and start kind of building it. I think mm -hmm. if you don't have some kind of a bundle, you're going to have a hard time. That's mm -hmm. what I've seen with some of my author friends who don't have very many books yet, mm -hmm. um, or they're trying to sell just one book or something like that. It's going to be really hard to be profitable um, running at any kind of Facebook ads when it's just one book. Right. Um, but you, that doesn't mean you can't start building it. You know, you can't, that right. you don't start getting a domain and setting everything up and just learning and studying so that when you do have enough, you know, that, that, that will be something that you can do. Um, I started this in November working on it and, um, it took me until a good February before I started to really like get some momentum. So it's going to take a while. Usually if you're doing it yourself, some people will hire it out and that's, that's fine. But I think I'm glad I did it myself and I'm glad I banged my head on the table <laughs> <laughs> because I learned so much in the process of the why, why am I doing this? Why do I need to run these kind of ads? Why do I need to test my headline? Why do I need to change my font on this page? Like there was a lot of that that I had to do, but in the end it has made my, just my knowledge base is so much bigger. Um, and it's only growing every day. I, I work on this every day. I mastermind with other direct authors all the time. Like I stay on top of it, just like I do my regular author business because mm -hmm. I, I want to always be improving. So yeah, I mean, it, I was started at zero too in November. I didn't have <laughs> anything like this. And I was mm -hmm. literally saying, I don't think I want to do this. Like, yeah. <laughs> this a lot of work. Like I just really was trying to talk myself out of it. You know, I was frustrated <laughs> for quite some time, but um, I think, you know, if you want something to pay off, you got to put in the work and mm -hmm. you just got to put blinders on and don't mm -hmm. pay any attention to what I'm doing. Don't pay any attention to what anybody else is doing. Just start getting it done. But I would say, you know, you need a, you need some books that you can bundle. I think that's yeah. mm -hmm. you know, important. And that you need to make sense. sure those covers are really on point because I see a lot of people running these ads, having stores, and their covers are not on on par with what they need them to be. Right. To mm -hmm. get people to click. So you really need to make sure all of that is something else you can be working on in the background. If you're like all my covers for the for several series now have been redesigned because I wanted them to convert better and they did, they have converted mm -hmm. way better. So um, mm -hmm. I think, you know, working on those sorts of things in the meantime is also something you can do. But yeah. And one other question about that, that I was saying, about, do you feel like you're marketing to your newsletter list more or using ads more? Like my goal is to use ads more. I want, I want more cold people mm -hmm. coming into mm -hmm. my funnel. Mm -hmm. but, um, I don't market my store a lot to my mailer light list because I mean, they know about it. And I, I tell them occasionally, Hey, if you do want to buy my store, you know, here you go. Mm -hmm. I market to my e-commerce list multiple times a week because yeah. they're a different type of list. 
Um, yeah. I, and I'm churning them or I'm stirring. And I invite them to leave. You know, if you want to mm-hmm. leave, you can leave. That's fine because I want to pay for them. If they aren't there to keep <laughs> buying from me, <laughs> they need yeah. to leave. And uh, so, in fact, I had somebody the other day that emailed me and she was on both of my lists. And that particular day, I had sent out the same email to both lists about something. I don't normally do that, but it was an announcement about something. And she was like, hey, I'm I'm a big fan, but I got the same email like two times within 15 minutes. And should I, why, do you, is there something wrong? And I was like, well, you're on both my lists. And you know, I tried to explain to her. She's like, well, should I get off of, I said, well, if, okay, on Mailer light, you're just going to get like general me stuff, you know, and occasional new release announcements, but it's going to be me talking about my dogs, you know, stuff like that. (laughs) And if you're on this list over here, you're going to find out about like all of my sales in my store, my special bundles, any coupons. And she goes, you know what? I'll just stay on both. (laughs) (laughs) It all sounds good. (laughs) She wanted to hear all the crazy stuff that I do. So, you know, you will have, you know, some of that, but, um, but the Clavio in the background, of course, is selling on its own, but I try as best I can to to bring in as many new people a day through, through ads um, as I can, because, you know, it just adds them to that list, puts them in the list and they keep going. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. So good. So good. I'm so happy for you and so glad that it's working so well. And and it's really kind of inspiring because, mm-hmm. you know, maybe it'll be the thing that gets people off the um off the bench and lots of fire under them to get <laughs> to get their store yeah. going. So yeah, I hope it is. Um, so what do you think the best thing you've done to set yourself up for success has been? Um, I really think for for many years, I did not really interact with other authors. We mm-hmm. There weren't a lot of opportunities to do that. We had forums, you know, right. back in the day. <laughs> we didn't even have Facebook groups. We had forums we could go on. But I, I because I was behind a pen name and I didn't want people knowing who I was, and I kind of had this idea that people were going to copy me, which they do. But, you know, now it's like, I don't really, whatever, you can do what you want to <laughs> do. Um, but back then, I was so afraid that people were going like, to steal my ideas or steal my this or that. And it was a totally different mindset that I don't have now. Um, And, but when I started interacting with more authors and masterminding and, and chatting every day and sprinting, I think that really has, has helped a lot because I feel like I'm not working alone and I can Mm -hmm. bounce ideas and we can talk about, you know, we can vent (laughs) Mm -hmm. this or that, or uh, show each other stuff if we're confused about how to do stuff. So I think that has, has been something that has really helped me. And like I said before, just showing who I really am to my readers, I, Mm -hmm. you know, they can either love me or not that, you know, either one's fine with me, but it Mm -hmm. just, it does help me to connect with them. And it's made a huge difference in my Facebook group. And they are my they bring me the most sales when I have a release or something in my Facebook group. So um, Mm -hmm. they, I think just showing people who you are and being consistent about it, you know, that has been a a huge help to me uh, since I kind of switched gears in 2019. That's awesome. Yeah, that is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well, Mm -hmm. I think this has been like, we've gotten so many good tips for Mm -hmm. people, even if they don't want to start a store, Mm -hmm. lots of the stuff you talked about earlier, I think it'll be all be really helpful. So Thank you for coming on and doing this and sharing what you've been doing. Um, where can people find out more about you and your store? Um, well, you can go to my website, which is just Rachel Hannah without the H on the end, rachelhannahauthor.com. Mm-hmm. And my store is store.rachelhannahauthor.com because I'm original. Um, <laughs> 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 and you'll see me around in, in groups and stuff because I, I like to procrastinate on doing my writing. So <laughs> that's right. There you go. If there you, you go. see me, just say, Rachel, go home. Go home. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, that is great. Well, we'll have all those links in the show notes and they will be at wish I'd known them podcast.com. And thanks to Alexa Larberg for editing and producing the podcast and to Adriel Wigging for doing the admin. Thanks everybody. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Mm-hmm. Thanks for listening to the Wish I'd Known Then podcast. We hope this episode inspired you, empowered you, and made you laugh a little bit too. If you loved it, tell your friends about it. And if you feel so inclined, leave us a review. We look forward to being with you again next week.